Did you know? Despite being a show aimed at young kids with largely child casts, Pokemon has a large number of adult-oriented references and innuendos. James more often than not is used for the tail end of many jokes that question his sexuality. Episode 157, The Fortune Hunters, features the famous flaming Moltres scene with Jesse replying, I think it came right out of his closet. In episode 475, Like It or Love It, when Carnivine is biting on James's head, James says, I'm not a piece of fruit, no matter what anyone says. Each of the female protagonists in the group of each series is always subjected to some kind of fan service despite their age. Masamitsu Hidaka, director and storyboard artist, said in an interview with Poke Beach that the reason Ash's female companions keep changing was because boys need a new piece of eye candy to look at every once in a while. Hidaka also said that girls are more customizable and you can change their outfits, like when they're in their bathing suits. Takashi Shiro, head writer for the original Pokemon series, had a number of interesting things to say about this in the first Pokemon novelization. Takashi said that, When kids turn 10, they are legally treated as an adult. They have to pay taxes, get arrested when they commit crime, can marry, get a job, and so on. This would partially explain the number of adult-oriented incidents that happen to the protagonist with their age not being a big concern. Takashi also mentioned that the reason that most workers in the Pokemon world were female was because at age 10, children are given the choice of continuing school or going on a Pokemon journey. Most males who wanted to become Pokemon trainers would end up utterly failing and became incompetent adults. Censorship and controversy have been a part of the Pokemon anime almost since the beginning. Episode 35, The Legend of Dratini, was left completely unaired in the US due to the fact that one of the main characters of the episode, the Safari Zone Warden, carried a gun to protect Dratini. Episode 38, Electric Soldier Porygon, was left unaired due to its infamous 4 second clip that induced seizures in young children. Team Rocket Salute was edited in the English version of Episode 13 of Advanced Generation, All Things Bright and Beautify, due to perceived likeness to Hitler's Nazi salute. Racism has played a large part in the controversy related to Pokemon as well. The Ice Psychic Pokemon Jinx, who first shows up as a helper to Santa Claus in the episode Holiday High Jinx, has been a focal point for some claiming that Pokemon is using the racial caricature of Blackface. After author Carol Boston Weatherford accused Jinx, as well as Dragon Ball's Mr. Popo, of being racist stereotypes, all episodes that contained Jinx originally were left unaired outside of Japan with few exceptions. This controversy caused Nintendo to recolor Jinx's hands and face purple, and all subsequent episodes to be recolored. Despite this controversy, another character, gym leader Lenora, had her apron edited due to the concern of another racially motivated archetype. Much like Lenora's original design, the Mammy racial southern archetype features a dark-skinned woman with a handkerchief over her head and an apron. This similarity led to it being slung over her shoulder in the dub. The reason that Brock was absent from the Orange Islands part of the anime was because of possible perceived racism as well. Masamitsu Hidaka noted in the Poke Beach interview that fear of complaints over Brock's eyes were what caused them to remove him even before the show was released in English. So, they brought in a tall, white, Anglo-looking character to replace him, just to be on the safe side. Many Pokemon appear in the anime way before the release of their respective generations game. Most famously, Ho-Oh appears in the very first episode of the anime, with Togepi following in episode 50, a full two years before the English and Japanese releases of Pokemon Gold and Silver. Other Gen 2 Pokemon like Donphan, Meryl, and Snubble all appear in Pokemon the first movie and its pre-movie short, with Lugia, Elekid, Slowking, and Blossom popping up in Pokemon the Movie 2000. The reason that all of these particular Gen 2 Pokemon show up so early in the anime is because the original first generation of Pokemon was said to be 190 instead of 151. Shigeki Morimoto, game designer and programmer at Game Freak, confirmed the existence of 39 Pokemon being cut from the first generation when asked at the Pokemon World Championships 2010. Another concept implemented early on in the anime far before its game counterpart was the idea of alternate colored Pokemon or shinies. While many do not consider certain Pokemon colorations shiny, such as the aforementioned Ho-Oh appearance, other color alterations are strikingly similar to their official first shiny art. The first, in episode 56, The Ultimate Test, shows Ash and the gang talking to Nurse Joy with Todd Snap taking pictures of Pokemon. One of those Pokemon is a green Weedle. The other, and most striking, is in episode 45, The Song of Jigglypuff. 
This Jigglypuff, while having a more bluish tint to its eyes, is virtually the same color as the official Gen 2 Shiny. Even closer is the official 4 kids art for Who's That Pokemon segment of that episode, which premiered roughly 9 months before Pokemon Gold and Silver's Japanese release. That's all for today! Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DigiKnowAnime.net where we post anime-related trivia every single day. Bye-bye!